Pacific Lumber started this recall just three months after our community elected Paul Gallegos. There was no crime wave, there was no controversy in the DA's office, there was only a lawsuit against Pacific Lumber. Commerce here, on the North Coast, has long been tied to the forest. Its abundant resource is the trees. The redwood forest has trees more than a thousand years old, although only a few remain standing. Activists have questioned the morality of destroying the old growth and have staged world-famous protests. protests to commerce without morality. But the forest workers also have strong feelings for the forest. The redwoods were traditionally their livelihood. 1999 was the year of the so-called Headwaters Forest Preservation Agreement. Within the headwaters are ancient redwood stands, all privately owned by the Pacific Lumber Maxam Corporation. The deal was complex, and at best, a forced compromise. The U.S. government, the Forest Service, and the state agreed to purchase the Headwaters Forest. The deal allowed Pacific Lumber to cut old growth surrounding the Headwaters Forest. Pacific Lumber went to work and began cutting the Headwaters boundary. The area became known as the Hole in the Headwaters, and so the controversy continues. In 2002, a new district attorney was elected in Humboldt County, Paul Gallegos. Gallegos learned from his deputy district attorney, Tim Stowen, that Pacific Lumber had withheld environmental impact studies during the Headwaters negotiations. Gallegos filed a civil lawsuit against Pacific Lumber. Responding to criticism for this, he wrote that he could not apply different rules for people based on their wealth or political power. Pacific Lumber responded with a petition drive, the beginning of an effort to recall the district attorney. Over the next year, Pacific Lumber would pay voter registrars up to $8 per signature and would secure the recall initiative on the March 2004 ballot. Prior to the um, recall qualifying for the ballot, they spent $40,000 they paid directly to a company called U.S. Petitions to help in the gathering of the signatures. Uh, they had a 160-day window to gather the signatures. After 150 of those days went by, they still didn't have enough signatures. They were short about 4,000 signatures. So Pacific Lumber stepped in and hired a company who came into town, and for $40,000, they were able to gather those last 4,000 signatures. When community support gained momentum, Pacific Lumber brought in a lobbyist from Sacramento to head up the recall campaign. He publicly vowed to take out the DA. In the months before the vote, commercials on both sides flooded the media. One of the major themes was that Gallegos was soft on crime. I arrested Pedro Hernandez for raping a little girl 2,500 times. Any other prosecutor would have put Hernandez away for life. Paul Gallegos let him off with one count. I'll never forget this case. And next Tuesday, she Actually, Gallegos was able to show that since taking office, he had done more criminal prosecutions than his predecessor. The fact of the matter is I took office. We had a 15% reduction in our budget, uh, which is that staff primarily. Despite that, we increased our filing by over 10%. Once we filed that lawsuit against PL, they started pulling. They said then they were going to recall me, and they started pulling beforehand to try to find a way to uh, phrase their argument. Then they have these cases that they talk about where we got convictions. They're saying, hey, he won, but we think he should have scored more points. And they fooled this community. Martinez Hernandez, a guy who walks in, gets convicted, he pleads guilty to everything he was charged with and gets the maximum sentence. The use of fear to manipulate public opinion, the great sums of money spent to buy media time, and the personal attack ads had an unexpected effect. 
Pacific Lumber's campaign stirred deep-seated resentments within the community over many issues, such as the failed Headwaters deal. In all, Pacific Lumber spent over $250,000 on the recall campaign. At the No Recall headquarters, people were working late into the evening. And uh, that was a, that was one there, you know, and then of course I got a whole bunch of back here. What has your response been pretty much for the night? I've picked up about a dozen yeses on these pages. They started this process so quickly after he came into office and obviously that it was on the coattails of the filing of the lawsuit. People that are very, very concerned about this, not only that it's a recall, but the nature of this particular recall that a corporation that can funnel in 90% of the funding source to recall any elected official is alarming. I think what this campaign ultimately will be is a referendum on the influence of money and marketing on politics. My obligation to everyone here is to uh, remain independent, and part of that is remain independent from law enforcement. We do a job together, we're partners, but we police the police.